first of all, just want to come on here and as a young man, take accountability and responsibility for my actions and know that they were wrong. Understand how shitty I'd feel. But I have to understand this and learn from it, grow from it. Two weeks later. What's up YouTube and welcome back to another video. Now before making this video, I was extremely conflicted because I really didn't want to make a video on Tony Lopez because I knew that I would have to spend hours upon hours looking through his content and after the third dancing video on his TikTok, it starts to get extremely cringy. I'd say like a sickening feeling in my stomach while I watch this grown man thirst trap on an ab made for kids. But after these comments that I saw on one of his TikToks where people were defending Tony Lopez for sending explicit messages towards a minor, I realized I had to make a video on Mr. Lopez. Lopez because it seems like the issue was swept under a rug and almost like it was forgotten about even after Tony Lopez confessed to committing this crime. Again, let's not forget that this is an actual crime. Not only did Tony Lopez not get deplatformed, but he has also gained over 1 million followers since being exposed for sending sexually explicit text messages to a minor in the summertime of 2020, with several other underage women coming forward months after to talk about their experiences with Tony Lopez. I've said this in a previous video, but it's pretty crazy to see the disconnect from YouTube to TikTok. Let's look. If you type in Tony Lopez exposed into the YouTube search bar, you will get dozens upon dozens of results where it seemed like Tony Lopez wouldn't have a career afterwards with big YouTubers all speaking about the situation and putting a spotlight on Tony's actions. But one long Instagram and Twitter apology later, Tony would be back on TikTok making dance videos for his fans as if nothing happened, and that's usually what happens when TikTok creators of his caliber get exposed. Just look at Sienna Mae or Zoe Laverne. Both of them were big content creators that have done some very weird shit in the past, and when they got caught, they said their apologies, took a week break, and then came back as if nothing happened. In Sienna Mae's case, she was able to manipulate her fans for about eight months until Jack would finally come out with his side of the story which has left her TikTok account vacant since the beginning of January. Zoe Laverne still uploads on her TikTok as well but it gets just a fraction of the views she once got when she first started doing Musical.ly and TikTok back in the day. So why is Tony Lopez so different as far as his views on TikTok and why have his fans been defending him so relentlessly in the comment section of his videos even though he has admitted to his wrongdoings. This video will be broken down into three parts parts, the allegations against Mr. Lopez, the apology that was done on his Instagram live and uploaded on his Twitter, and the aftermath of the whole situation. Now let's start off with the allegations against Tony Lopez. During the summertime of 2020, a video would surface that would show Snapchat messages that were exchanged from Tony Lopez and an underage girl. These messages would range from Tony calling her young to calling her babe. Then he would finally say that he would have a sexual relationship with her, but she's playing games. Now I am saying these messages out of context because they do get a little bit explicit and I really didn't want to put that in the video. The screenshot that I did find was in horrible quality, but here is the screenshots. Read it at your own discretion and I know you're going to have to squint to see it because it's very blurry so i apologize in advance when this screenshot would come out the community was in shock this would be the first of three girls who would come out against tony lopez a couple months later tony would find himself being sued by the two other women these two would go by different aliases to keep their identity hidden the first girl would be addressed as hl doe she claims that tony engaged in unlawful sexual acts hl doe would state that she did tell tony that she was 16 but was actually 15 years old at the time she was persuaded lured and coerced into having intercourse with Tony Lopez, even though he for sure knew her age. The next minor to take the stand was CH Doe. She claims that when she was invited to the Hype House, Tony and her exchanged social media info and she gave Tony her number. But as soon as she left, Tony would try and pressure her into sending him nudes and would also send exposed pictures of his private parts to her and would tell CH Doe to stop being 16 years old. Tony Lopez acknowledged that both of the women that he was speaking to were underaged, but didn't care. Now let's go over the apologies. On August 22nd, 2020, Tony would upload this apology to his Twitter. One part of the apology that I'd like to take a closer look at is the part where he puts some of the blame onto him being new to the entertainment slash LA scene and how you can't believe everything you are told. The thing is, now hear me out, 
If you are speaking to someone new and you are interested in them, but you don't know them very well, or at least not well enough, I'd say the majority of the world would ask them how old they are. But if you're in the entertainment industry and you're as big of a content creator as Tony Lopez is, you should have verified that they weren't lying about their age if they did tell you that they were above the age of consent. If they couldn't verify that they were telling the truth, well then you should have cut off all forms of contact. The thing is, there are multiple outcomes of the situation, but Tony chose the worst one. Moving on, Tony Lopez would jump on Instagram Live and we'll talk about the recent allegations against him. Keep in mind that this was in context to the screenshot that was leaked during the summertime, not the two other women that came out afterwards. First of all, just want to come on here and as a young man, take accountability and responsibility for my actions and know that they were wrong, understand how shitty I'd feel, but I have to understand this and learn from it, grow from it. I'm not going to hide and run away and act like shit's not going on, but I know it was wrong. And I'm just going to hold myself accountable and responsible for some past immature decisions. Um, I got to keep moving forward and learning and growing. You know, so many people don't teach you about how to live this lifestyle or how to be here in this position, but I'm learning and I'm growing. And, uh, I'm not gonna excuse my past actions at all. I'm just gonna understand and learn and grow, become a better person. And I can say sorry all I want, but my actions are what's gonna show who I am. And Tony would talk about how he knew that what he was doing was wrong, but it didn't stop him from doing it. He said that he was going to move on and grow from this experience and hold himself more accountable. And I think that's where the other Twitter apology comes into play as well where instead of taking accountability, actual accountability, he blames it on the entertainment business and not really being accustomed to it as well as he should have been and just trusting the women that he was around. Not actually putting the blame on himself for the wrongdoings of what he's done, taking some of the blame, but also putting more of the blame on the entertainment and business industry. When at the age of 21, he was still doing this, so he was old enough. Now it's time to take a look at the aftermath of the whole situation. After Tony would come out with his terrible apologies, he would take a couple weeks off of TikTok and he would be dragged through the mud on YouTube. He did apologize, but it would be on social media platforms that have a fraction of his TikTok followers. During his IG live apology, he would have a peak viewership of 30,000 viewers and his Twitter account only has 430,000 followers. Keep in mind, that he didn't even save the video or upload it to his Instagram or TikTok. I think that's very fishy that Tony didn't even attempt to have an apology on TikTok, knowing that it's his biggest platform by a long shot compared to his Instagram and Twitter. And for the recent lawsuits against Tony, it makes sense why he would remain quiet. Actually, he wouldn't. In an interview with TMZ, Tony would state, these allegations are not at all true. I never sent nudes to these women and didn't ask them to send me pictures either. And I certainly wouldn't have sex with someone who told me they were underage. Tony would also go on to say, this whole thing seems like a money grab to me. I'm going to fight it to the very end. I will not allow them to continue to slander my name and attack my character. Hmm, now where did we hear that before? I am a victim of continual attempts to cancel me and slander my name with false claims. We have to wait and see what happens with this lawsuit because Tony has been extremely quiet with everything that's been going on. He's continuing to dance on TikTok and act as if nothing is happening. And because he did his apology on IG Live and Twitter, the majority of his TikTok fans have no clue what happened in the summertime and what's going on currently with the lawsuit. So that's why this video will be uploaded to TikTok in parts so that hopefully it blows up, like the GOYs video that I also uploaded to TikTok, to spread more awareness to the situation because there's a huge disconnect from YouTube and TikTok. I do think Tony does need to actually hold himself more accountable accountable and take more action. If the lawsuit does favor the two minors, then I would expect Tony to upload an apology to his TikTok account where all of his fame is. That would show me that he is actually being real with holding himself accountable. That would also show me that he does have true regret with the whole situation. But again, we have to wait until the lawsuit is over to see exactly what happens. As for Tony, he will continue to do his own thing.
trending on TikTok and his fans will continue to have his back, which sucks, but it's true. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because we are extremely close to 100,000 subscribers. And again, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video where we talk about EDP 445 and what his life has been like after he was exposed by Alex Rosen, aka Chet Goldstein.